It is January 31st, 2024. Have you seen what's happening in the Middle East with the United States and Iran? And just all, all the commotion that's going on, the attack of the ships from the Houthis and all of the drumming up of war. Everyone's saying, let's go to war. We have to go and attack Iran, Iran. Hey, come on, let's look at Daniel 8. This is a crucial book right now that everyone is overlooking. They're not realizing that what is probably going to happen is right here in Scripture. Okay, so let's take a look at um, Daniel 8. And I'm going to be looking in, starting in verse 3, you could start from verse 1, um, but you'll see that this is taking place in Persia. In Shushan is the modern city of Susa, which is really a um, kind of like uh, ancient ruins that you go as tourists to visit. I've seen pictures, of, you can go online and look for pictures of it, Susa or Shushan, and you'll see that it um, it's in ruins. But anyway, it's right there in uh, western Iran. Uh, so it says, uh, Daniel says this, Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there, standing beside the river, was a ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Kind of strange language. right? But evidently these horns represent leaders or nations, and one came up after the other one. One came up last. So I saw the ram pushing westward, pushing northward, and southward. So it says the only direction that it wasn't pushing was eastward. So that no animal could withstand him. Here the animals are uh, representing nations uh, or kings or kingdoms. Nor was there any that could deliver from his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of uh, it's an interesting idea. So would anybody say that Iran is great right now? Uh, maybe among them? I don't know. You know, that's you could argue about that. Definitely the Persians, the Iranians, they might say, yes, we've always been a great nation. Um, but they are uh, causing a lot of problem and conflict with Saudi Arabia and some of the neighboring nations, right? And definitely Israel. And they're always calling America the great Satan and Israel the little Satan or something like that. So then in verse 5 it says, uh, And as I was considering, suddenly a male goat... All right, so now a different animal. There's a ram, which is representing Media Persia, basically Iran. And then there's this male goat, which I believe is the United States. But here uh, Gabriel says that it's Greece. You tell me if you believe that the modern country of Greece or the end time country of Greece would fit that would fit the bill there and then that might be why you'll say ah yeah that's why it was Alexander the Great when Greece was um, you know a great a great uh, empire okay but that does not fit with the verses that we're going to read about this being an end time chapter everything has to come together we can pick out different verses if we want to try to prove our point but we need to look at all of the verses together in context and um, this definitely sounds like an end time thing. So it says that there was a male goat that came from the west across the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. What does that sound like? It came across the whole surface of the earth without touching the ground. That sounds like airplanes or without touching the ground also could be by sea. Technically speaking, ships coming by sea. That could still be Greece at that time. But Greece could not make it all the way to Iran very easily. Back when the Greek Empire existed, they would have to go all the way around Africa and then come up to Iran that way because they wouldn't be able to access Greece directly by water. Uh, they'd still have to go through Lebanon and Syria to and Iraq to get over to Iran. I'm just saying, but the United States definitely can. It can go there by air and it can go there by sea because Iran has a very long coast. Um, as we're seeing, there's been, there's been a lot of different attacks and some uh, murders just recently. Uh, three guys were murdered and many people were injured. So um, let's see in verse six. Uh, no, no, no. Then the male goat came from the west across the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Verse 6. Then he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing beside the river, and ran at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to withstand him, 
but he cast him down to the ground and trampled him, and there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. So something is going to cause the U.S. to be have this furious rage um, and this power to attack. Something terrible is going to happen. Maybe besides these three guys that were killed. I mean, that's bad enough, but maybe something bigger um, that's going to just cause overall. And hopefully, the, you know, I wouldn't put it past them to create some type of false flag thing, but hopefully it won't come to that. Well, we'll see what happens. So then in verse 8, therefore the male goat grew very great. So this is the male goat. This is the one that's Greece. Um, I believe it's the U.S. Um, therefore, the male goat grew very great, but when he became strong, the large horn was broken. So you can interpret that as you like. The, lar the large horn was the leader and broken. What does broken mean here? In place of it, four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven. So the, 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 this one leader is broken. He's eliminated and four come up in his place. I know this is where it starts to sound strange. The whole thing sounds strange. And out of one of them, so the four come up and then out of one of them came a little horn. And we know that the little horn is talking about the anti-Messiah or the antichrist. So... It says that out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. And it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of, of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away. Wow, we don't have daily sacrifices happening yet. So the daily sacrifices would have to be reinstituted for this to happen. So the first part of the prophecy about the goats and the, the, the goat and the ram, that must be separated in time because we don't see the daily sacrifice happening in uh, Jerusalem yet again. So, and by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away uh, and the place of his sanctu sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth to the ground. There we know he's not good because he cast truth to the ground. Um, he did all this and prospered. Here's the key. Now it comes where somebody says to Gabriel, come on, Gabriel, come over here and explain this to Daniel. And this is the great, one of the great things when you're reading through prophecies, you can get so frustrated having to depend on other people to interpret it for you. Um, so let's, it's nice to be able to depend on the archangel of God in heaven, of our Father in heaven, to explain it to us. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who was speaking, how long will the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices and the transgression of desolation, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? Just if you were wondering, I'm using the New King James Version. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Verse 15, then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, that's the canal or the river in Iran, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. Help Daniel to understand the vision. I'm adding that part in. And then in verse 17, it says, So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. Can you imagine what an archangel looks like? Um, when he came near, I was afraid and I fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Not the time of Alexander the Great, but to the time of the end. Maybe Daniel was imagining this was going to happen in his time soon. He's like, Daniel, understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Verse 18, now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, 
the end shall be. The ram which you saw. Now he's going to explain what everything represents. Uh, so he says, the, Gabriel says, The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. We definitely know that Persia is Iran. Iranians till today still call themselves Persians, and they will tell you how great their empire is and how great their nation is. One of the longest existing, probably say that it's the longest existing nation on earth. That's what they might say. And the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. If, if our father wanted to talk about the United States, how could he refer to it? But other than symbolically, is he going to say, it's the kingdom of the United States. How is he even going to say that to Daniel? Or America, is he going to say that, that word when it didn't even exist? He's going to use symbols. If you have a problem with symbols, do a little study on it. You'll see that many symbols are used, even for places that you wouldn't think need a symbol, like Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem, right? There are times where Jerusalem is actually called, it's compared to Sodom and Gomorrah. Jerusalem is. And then other places in Israel or in the world are compared to Egypt. It uses them in different ways, considering the, the good or bad example that those nations, um, or, or some characteristic of that place that represents the other one. We know what Sodom and Gomorrah represent, all the, the sin that was happening there. So why would Greece be used? We'll let's talk about that in a second. So um, the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. Now, some people say that this word first can also mean like the number one king, the number one king in the world, the first king. Um, that's up to debate too. So now in verse 22, as for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of the nation but not with its power. Hmm. So if that's the United States, after this attack on Iran, something bad happens to the leader, and then the country is divided into four parts. Hard to believe, right? And you, if you're American, and even most people in the world would say, that's never going to happen. Well, listen, give me an answer to this question. Do you think that before Germany was divided into East Germany and West Germany. If you ask Germans, do you think your country is going to be divided into East and West? They would say never. It's not going to happen. We can look back on history and say, oh yeah, it was, this, this is what happened in Berlin and all that stuff. But they never would have imagined that that was going to happen. So, obviously, yeah, no American would imagine that the U.S. But now let's imagine it's Greece. So, tiny little Greece. Go look on a map. You will see Greece is a small country, even for Europe. It's tiny. And then go divide it into four parts? <laughs> what are those four parts even going to be? Now, the U.S. I can see why the U.S. needs to be divided into four parts. As an American, I don't see it so much, but kind of. But from other, other countries, they could be looking at the U.S. and say, oh, the U.S. is always causing problems. It's going, it's going into the Middle East. It's going into Asia. It thinks it's the policeman of the world. We need to weaken its power. Let's divide it into two. Won't be enough. It'll still be two big parts. Let's divide it into four parts. And this is to weaken it. Um, and maybe with some of these rumors of civil war and problems like this on the border with Mexico, maybe it'll be something that just kind of naturally happens. Obviously, I, I hope it doesn't happen. I like, I like my country i like the us i like american people um so anyway this this is what this scripture is saying and it's just all obviously prophecy we're all just talking about what could be what might be it's just, it's not like a prophecy is something that you use as a um uh like almost like a map not something to predict the future but as things are happening, you talk about the possibilities, and then if you see something that kind of matches with those possibilities, you say, oh, look, I wonder if this is what that was talking about. Um, they even did it at the time of Yeshua, of Jesus. Um, they said, are you the prophet? Are you the one that's supposed to come? Are you, like, they all had an idea that someone was supposed to come, a Messiah, or a prophet, or something like that, the Savior. They, they had this idea, but they weren't sure. So, um, 
let's uh, continue reading here. So then in verse 23, it says, in, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise having fierce features who understands sinister schemes. Definitely sounds like a major bad guy. Um, his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Oh, I definitely recommend that you go compare this to Revelation verses, uh, chapter 13, verses 2 and 4. Same language is talking about the Antichrist, the, the beast that's in the... Um, in Revelation 13, 4. So he comes, but not by his own power. The same language, the same word. Makes sense, right? There's one author of the Bible. It's our Father in heaven and Yeshua, his son. They are the author of this book. But there are 66 writers. Well, not 66 writers, because Paul wrote a whole bunch of them. But there are many writers, but one author. And that's why it makes sense that the message would stay uh, the same, uh, even though it's separated by... Um, hundreds or even thousands of years sometimes. So uh, then it says, um, but not by his own power, he shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people, the saints, right? He's going to destroy some of the saints. So through his cunning in verse 25, we're getting down to the end of the um, chapter here. So through his cunning, he shall cause deceit, obviously. And then in Jesus, Yeshua said in Matthew 24, the first few verses, Mark 13 and Luke 21, the first few verses in all of those, the, the apostles come to Jesus, Yeshua, and say, hey, what will be the time of your, what will be some signs that we can look for when you return? They thought he was going to return in their lifetimes. They finally started to accept that he was going to die. And now they're saying, well, so what will be the sign of your return? So he said, be careful that you are not deceived. And so right here it says, So through his cunning he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. Right? Because we know that Satan inspiring this guy is going, he thinks that he can actually defeat uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. Um, but he shall be broken without human means. Definitely. No, no human's going to be able to defeat him, but our Elohim, our God in heaven, he will defeat him. And the vision of the evenings and the mornings, which was told, is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to the time of Alexander the Great. It refers to when it was written? No, for it refers to many days in the future. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterward, I rose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. Even with all that, even with the explanation by Gabriel, he still was like, nobody understood it. And that's kind of amazing because Daniel seems so gifted. Um, but it wasn't necessary that he understood. It was necessary for him to write it down for us to be able to read it. And no one has really understood it very well. But now we're starting to see that this is coming to fruition, this attack, this conflict that has been building for the last, say, 50 years um, between um, Iran, Israel, and the United States. Um, but keep an eye, keep an eye. If the United States come, comes across the whole surface of the earth without touching the ground, right, like it says in those words, and tramples, it doesn't say destroys, right? It says it tramples. Um, uh, the male goat came from the west across the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes then he came to the ram that had the two horns which uh, I saw standing beside the river and he ran with furious power and I saw him confronting the ram and he was moved with rage he broke his two horns um, so he attacked the ram uh, and he cast him down to the ground and trampled him yeah it says it in verse 7 he trampled him and there was no one who could come. So it doesn't say he like destroyed him. It doesn't, who knows what it's, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't sound like he bombed him. Although they do use that a lot, a lot of missiles and bombs um, to avoid having boots on the ground. But he trampled him. Um, so it sounds pretty devastating. But it's just the beginning, as we read those other verses, just the beginning of something terrible that's going to unfold after that. I look forward to hearing your comments and hearing your ideas about what this could mean. Um, 
even if you want to tell me why it's Alexander the Great. I've heard, I've read the Alexander the Great with um, all of the different way that his four generals and the whole thing, I've read it so many times, but it just doesn't work because it's not the end times for me. If you could, if you believe that, if you can explain how those verses that we went over that refer, that it says it refers to the time of the the end in many days in the future, that would be a more interesting explanation why you think so. This happened basically around 600, 650 um, BC. Uh, so how 600 years before Christ that this, uh, uh, this is when it was written by Daniel. And then it happened maybe a few hundred years. I mean, this is what people say. Alexander the Great uh, lived in around the year 300, I think, uh, roughly speaking, I don't know the exact year, around 300, so maybe two or 300 years later, that's when he lived. So many days in the future, that's, that's what this is talking about, or the time of the end and the latter days, that's just talking about 300 years later from their perspective, like written down in the Bible, considering all of the other Bible verses that are written about future, and also because it talks about the Antichrist, and it connects it to the Antichrist, and we know that's in Revelation, and that's definitely talking about the end times. Anyway, I'm, I'm interested in hearing your opinion about that, and um, I enjoyed talking to you about this. I hope you enjoyed it. Please um, subscribe and like the video if you liked it. Um, if you don't, I'm sorry, I'll try to make better videos so that you like them. But uh, this, is the, this is the message that comes to my mind and is on my heart. Um, bless you all. Have a great night, a, day, a great day, a good afternoon.